Okay, hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be having a little look at something which I got in the early to mid 90s. Uh, it was when I had the shop Preble Haze where we sold lots of Star Wars stuff. And at the time uh, we used to sell lots of new books as well. And one of the reps that um, sold us some of our new books he was an avid film poster collector, so much so, in fact, that he became friends with uh, Tom Chantrell, who was the artist who painted the original Star Wars British quad poster, which um, absolutely iconic piece of Star Wars art, perhaps the best of, of those early uh, posters there. He also did the, the um, Empire Strikes Back as well. So yeah, this rep, he became friends with Tom and uh, started buying bits and pieces from his collection, copies of his posters, as well as some original artwork. It was at this time that I was actually offered, if I wanted to buy it, the original artwork uh, for the British Star Wars quad. And bearing in mind, this is 25 years ago now in the mid nineties. Um, and back then the artwork would have cost me £5,000 to buy that original artwork, which, you know, by today's standards is probably, it's so cheap, it, you know, such an iconic piece would probably fetch £100,000. Um, I don't know who ended up buying it. I don't know if the rep bought it. I don't think he could afford it. But because of his um, conversations with Tom Chantrell, um, I was able to get these three pieces, which is what I'm going to show you today. Um, so basically this is the first bit so um for the first film um that he tom had a set of the stills uh so he had as many photo references as was around at the time but he also had these two bits as well so this is quite nice this is quite early itself and this is like um well i don't know i don't know where it's from um it's just a single sheet of paper as i said it's come from the artist's own collection so i don't know where he got it but it is really nice i guess it's just an early concept picture i mean i suppose it looks a little bit like the actors and that looks a little bit like an x-wing but it's not that accurate the logo is just about there it's quite interesting isn't it it's something very very early i, I really like it um but i don't know a lot i don't really know where it's come from and also included was this which is like a single page synopsis of the first film basically giving you the film's length in feet plus its original running time of two hours and a minute. It's British because it's got the certificate U there. Um, and then the credits on the back. Really, really interesting piece. And I seem to remember when I first got these, it did also come with a set of the original uh, 12 front of house stills, which all had like a, on the back, they all had like a printed strip on, but accompanying it, was a folder which had over 200 superb black and white high quality stills in which um although i didn't want them myself and there was a few which i'd never seen before um i did uh, manage to put tom in contact with another local collector and he bought this big big folder full of the uh, the stills and uh, really really fantastic he only paid about a pound each so uh, he got a bit of a bargain there they're fantastic the most interesting thing i got out of it at that time was this. So this is like a pre-production booklet for The Empire Strikes Back. It's got like a shiny cover. Unfortunately, it looks like someone spilt their Ribena down the corner here. <laughs> but the actual content of this is, is, is incredible. Um, it's ring bound, as you can see. And I guess this would be like what they would call a campaign book, uh, something to give to the press maybe, um, or to suppliers. So, the Star Wars saga continues, Empire Strikes Back, from EMI Elstree El Studios, Borham Wood with their numbers and that. And I don't know, I just don't know, this seems more a production piece rather than something that would have been given to the press. Um, so it's the fact sheet, new Star Wars space fantasy shooting on eight Elstree stages, transatlantic technology backs up studio filming. And it's almost like a press release. In London, a battle on an ice planet, intrigue in a city in the clouds, romantic scenes in space, and a crisis aboard a Star Destroyer. These are some of the sequences already shot for The Empire Strikes Back, the new space fantasy from the makers of Star Wars. 
Um, and there we are, the film that continues the saga is entering its third month of shooting at EMA Elstree, um, as well as uh, following completion of successful filming in a sub-zero location on a mountain pass in Finns, Norway, 5,000 feet above studio level. And um, it then goes into some of the cast and the story. The filming is an exercise in international technology. I don't know, I wonder if this was like given to magazines for them to write about maybe the making of the film. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. It's so unusual, isn't it? Um, Han Solo's spaceship full scale for the Empire Strikes Back. London, England. On a recent spring morning, a team of specialists arrived at EMA Elstree Studios near London to undertake an unusual task. Compare, the company involved, specialise in lifting heavy industrial equipment by means of compressed air. Britain's offshore oil industry owes much to their expertise, but what's brought them to Elstree? They have come to build this, come to the studios to build a spaceship. So this is about the company that built the Millennium Falcon, a one-to-one -one, um, rendition of the Millennium Falcon. 120 men working on the construction of the set. This is a note about Finns. So this is where they did the Hoth scenes. A note about Finns is in a town, a village or a tourist resort. It owes its existence to the fact that there's an important railroad station. <laughs> then a photo of Mark Hamill there on, on Taunton. I know we've seen that photo before. Copyright 1979, Black Falcon List Limited. It's really mysterious, isn't it, this? Um, then we've got the cast for Empire. Luke Han Leia, Lord Darth Vader, David Prowse, Peter May, who came in, Bruce Bower. So General Riking gets quite a quite a, a prominent credit, as does Wedge, Dennis Lawson. And then unit directors there, Evan Kirshen, obviously the main director, and Gary Kurtz, the producer, with Lucas as executive producer. Lee Brackett, the uh, sci-fi fantasy author, gave a hand on the writing. Um, there we are, Macquarie there. Special effects, Brian Johnson. Then it's got a little mini biography about each actor. So there's the Mark Hamill bit. Then Harrison Ford, born in Chicago, 1942. Carrie Fisher. And then... Billy D. Williams there. Anthony Daniels and uh, David Prowse. Weightlift, British weightlifting champion from 62 to 64. Born in Bristol, 1935. He's getting on a bit now, isn't he? Peter Mayhew. And Kenny Baker. These like little potted biographies. A bit about the producers then. So Irvin, the director, Irvin Kirshner and uh, Gary Kurtz. A little piece about them. Then some of the other people as well. Lucas, Lee Brackett, Lawrence Kasdan. This is interesting. So this is uh, European titles for The Empire Strikes Back. So it, what it would be called in France, Belgium, Switzerland. Spain, Italy, Germany, Austria, Denmark, Norway, Swindon, uh, Swindon, Sweden, and Finland. Um, and then this is what the cast is called in different languages as well. So in French, Luke is Luc, and Han Solo is Jan Solo. Uh, C-3PO is Z-6PO. R2-D2, D2-R2, Dark Vador. <laughs> Press and publicity offices for Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back. So in North and South America and the Far East, it was uh, this guy in Universal City, California, Sid Gannis. And in Europe, UK and the Middle East, it was Stanley Bailecki in London, in Addison Avenue in London. Alan Arnold was the unit publicist. So there we are. So I think, I think that was some sort of press release rather than a like a behind the scenes sort of thing for uh, like movie reviewers. I think it was more like a press release and um, it was used as the basis for 
um, visitors to the set because we've seen lots of footage of uh, TV companies visiting the Empire set. The BBC certainly went there. Um, I think Blue Peter took a visit to the Empire Strikes Back set when they were filming some of the uh, the scenes in Elstree. The interior Hoth scenes were filmed in Elstree. So I think it, it harks back to that time. And, you know, I guess because Tom Chantra was involved in the production and the poster was definitely an important part of it, maybe they uh, that's how he ended up getting a, uh, a copy of this for himself. But with that... This little fact sheet here and, and this, which I'm still really mystified by, but it's absolutely gorgeous piece of uh, artwork and then it would look really nice framed up actually because it's really, really early. You can see it's from the time. Um, if anyone knows anything about this and what it is, do please um, uh, let me know in the comments below because it's certainly something that's quite unusual uh, in my collection. So there we are. That's uh, just a quick look. I think those deserved a little short video um, all on their own because they're such special pieces. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that little look at these uh, articles once owning to British artist Tom Chantrell. If you have enjoyed the video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do consider subscribing for regular vintage Star Wars content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.